boulevard marked by delicious stories from different decades. For some, ancient history begins as far, far away as 1993, when a young, straight actor named River Phoenix died of an overdose outside the Viper Room. But way back in the 1940s, long before Johnny Depp owned the famous club at the corner of Sunset and Larrabee, it was known as the Melody Room, purportedly operated by the gangsters Mickey Cohen and Bugsy Siegel, and among its entertainment were transvestite strippers. <sighs> There's a surprising amount of queer history along this other kind of strip. The Sunset Strip, <gasps> a mile and a half long cluster of nightclubs, ritzy hotels, chic boutiques, and rock venues. Why is West Hollywood so associated with gay goings on? <gasps> it's partly a continuation of Hollywood Boulevard's glamour, <gasps> leading up to the area which was thick with gay bars back in the 1930s, the 40s, and the 50s. But WeHo was a gay zone for an additional and very specific reason. It was over the line from the city of Los Angeles, which was under the thumb of the then anti-gay LAPD. Located in Los Angeles County's unincorporated territory until 1984, West Hollywood was under the much more lenient and gay tolerant Sheriff's Department. Speakeasies, gambling clubs, and houses of ill repute tended to flourish along the Strip and in other parts of West Hollywood. So basically, it was the wild, wild West Hollywood. Speakeasies were already illegal, so it didn't matter that much what other kinds of illicit activity might be going on. In fact, the illicit boys were often the entertainment. Drag shows were very popular in those early clubs. It was all one big illegal, tipsy underground. Ciro's was one of the most glamorous nightclubs of 1940s old Hollywood. Located at 8433 Sunset Boulevard, where you'll now find the Comedy Store. Ciro's was the place to be written up in the gossip columns or encounter such queer icons and starlets like Marlena Dietrich, Carmen Miranda, Gypsy Rose Lee, Janice Page, Hildegard, Mae West, and of course, Judy Garland. Ciro's eventually turned into a rock and roll club called It's Boss in the late 1960s. Sundays hosted gay tea dances and was one of the first places where men were allowed to dance together. You see, back then, the LAPD had rules governing public dances. Rule number six was, the management shall not permit any person to dance with another person of the same sex while attending and participating in a public dance. Nevertheless, queers persisted. 8730 Sunset Boulevard was the address of the Jane Jones Little Club, opened in 1936 and named after a not-so-little woman with a very deep voice who had been a singer in many movie musicals. This upscale club was one of the few places that catered to lesbians. That is, until the county sheriff's vice squad raided it in September of 1939, claiming that they were selling alcohol after legal hours. It shut down completely a few months later. Lesbians could also convene at Tessa's Cafe International at 8711 Sunset Boulevard from 1936 to 1942. It featured male impersonators like Tommy Williams and Jimmy Renard. They looked suave and sophisticated in their tuxes and ties. The classy venue exuded a sort of Weimar Berlin vibe. Marlene Dietrich even came to see Tommy perform. A 1940 guidebook called How to Sin in Hollywood featured an illustration of two women in tuxedos smoking a cigar and a pipe, along with the caption, when your urges move, the Cafe International on Sunset Boulevard. The location offered supper, drinks, and the ability to watch boy girls who necked and sulked, and little girl customers who look like boys. 
These taverns and bars are not safe or proper places for servicemen to patronize. Firm handling is necessary to eliminate that undesirable fringe of the industry. Those were the words of a Navy spokesman to the LA Times in 1942. The Navy enacted a ban on some 30 bars in the LA area with a queer persuasion. It seemed too many servicemen were seeking out a good time, a last hurrah, before taking off for the Pacific in World War II. Café International was one of those on the banned list, along with Chez Boheme at 8950 Sunset Boulevard. During the hard drink in 1930s and 40s, Chez Boheme was run by comic singer Ray Bourbon, an intimate of sultry, sexy siren Mae West. Oh! Bourbon was one of LA's most famous female impersonators, known for some rather risque material, a mixture of highbrow and lowbrow entertainment. Something I know something about. <laughs> Don't go too low. Bourbon changed their name from Ray, R-A-Y, to Ray, R-A-E, and claimed to have had a sex change operation in their 1956 album, Let Me Tell You About My Operation. But, well, maybe that was just a little bit more of a publicity stunt than a truth, but oh, can you blame a lonely girl for wanting some attention? Oh, oh, oh. Thanks for watching another episode of the Stuart Timmons LGBTQ History Tour. There's a lot more in store. Firm handling is necessary. Firm handling. Firm handling. Firm handling. Firm handling. Firm handling.